the deductive problem of evil. Premise 1, God is loving, omnipotent, and omniscient. Premise 2, hence, if God exists, there shall be no evil. Premise 3, yet there is evil. And number 4, the conclusion, by modus tollens, then, God does not exist. That's the problem of evil briefly and validly stated. However, this argument is unsound, for its second premise is false. I shall now explain why I say that. And again, that second premise is, hence, if God exists, there shall be no evil. God is omnipotent, so he has power to prevent evil, it seems. He is omniscient, so he knows about all evil that will ever occur. Finally, he is loving, so it appears he would want to prevent it. And yet there is evil. What are we to uh, make of this line of, of questions or observations? It all revolves around human freedom, and that's similar to my response to the argument from divine hiddenness. Uh, theists believe, or at least uh, can believe, they have that option, that God created human beings with libertarian freedom. And our freedom is, in and of itself, a good thing. But if we are free, then we can choose to be inhumane to our fellow man. This may or, not, this may or may not explain all suffering and evil, but what it does expl explain is that, or what it shows, is that God's existence and evil simultaneous existence are not uh, mutually exclusive. That they're not necessarily uh, inconsistent with each other. And that is enough to defeat uh, this argument, this atheistic argument. So God does not necessarily have to prevent all evil, so premise two is false, and the argument as a whole is unsound. Let's move on now to the, uh, I suppose, newer version of the argument, the inductive form, the inductive argument from evil. Uh, premise one, granted that the deductive argument considered uh, in the last uh, proof is not totally conclusive, surely it is at least more plausible than not that there would not be as much evil as there is if God exists. That's the first premise. Premise two, yet there is gratuitous evil. And three, the conclusion, therefore, it is more plausible than not that God does not exist. So atheism is more plausible than not, more probable than not. This argument, however, fails for the same reason as the last one, namely free will. There is no reason to expect that humans shall not freely choose to do evil Moreover, if mankind is totally depraved, as Christians believe, we do expect there to be a lot of evil in the world. But, you may think, this only accounts for man's inhumanity to man. What of nature's inhumanity to man? First, nature is impersonal, so we should not expect her to be humane. Of course, God could step in and prevent the tragedies, that's the whole point of the argument, of course. Uh, and that, it, uh, but that is exactly what he has done. That's what God did until we humans blew it. How did we blow it? Through exercise of free will. God warned us. He told us we would suffer and die if we ate the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden. We ate it anyhow. So God does love us and he doesn't like us to suffer the natural evil but there are inevitable consequences uh, to actions. All right, so the inductive problem of natural evil is clearly uh, intended to show a plausible inconsistency within theism. If we restrict our focus more specifically to uh, traditional Christianity, it is seen to be not so plausible after all. Uh, instead, we would expect there to be a lot of evil uh, even though God is loving and omniscient and omnipotent. Uh, so Christian theism is not inconsistent uh, with respect to the inductive problem of natural evil. 
and, and certainly not with respect to um, uh, man's inhumanity to man. Uh, we would expect that. We would expect the consequences of evil, uh, given the Christian view. All right, so that concludes what I wanted to say on the problem of evil, and we'll look next at arguments for atheism based on definitions of the divine attributes. Shalom out.